Hey everyone, this is my Patreon proud reaction to the 10th episode of Owari Monogatari, Shinobu Mail Part 3. So, we actually ran into Shinobu much more quickly than I thought, like we just reunited last episode at the park. She was laying down on the ground, kind of had the, the, the swing as a blanket, and we just kind of talked a little bit about things, and they clearly, she clearly had an interaction similar, fighting some monster thingy. Still not exactly sure what this thing is, it seems like some kind of dark nightmare past thing abomination that weird form i don't really know what they call this thing i really don't but we'll probably get more answers on what it is in this episode so yeah hopefully we can deal with it whatever this is because it does seem to be a bit of a problem so if we could just like stab it to death or or something that'd be great so let's get into it and see how we deal with this thing i mean Araragi's here shinobu's here kambadu's here i mean i'm sure we could take it in a fight probably so let's see three two one play Left half is a monkey, right crab, not gonna uh, monkey Oh god, yeah, this thing. Definitely seems like a combination of the past animal aberrations that we've dealt with coming back to haunt us. It's pretty terrifying. It's a good thing they can communicate with their eyes. Useful skill for sure. Okay, where's the no time getting into this battle? Oh well not going super smoothly so far but it's just getting started let's we can recover from this shinobu you don't you don't want to you don't want to participate you don't want to help I, okay i guess she has that much confidence in us or doesn't want to touch this horrible thing oh uh, yeah crab claw is not going to be easy to break through especially not a supernatural one. Oh, that was close oh uh, that, that was definitely close. Uh. What? Oh, she tossed in the sword. Okay, thank you for at least giving us something to fight with. Like, some degree of help is appreciated. Koko Watani. Let's see if we can take this thing down. Aberration and not. Oh, damn. What what exactly is this thing, then? Certain someone. Just nothing. Okay, let's see how well you can use this thing, Araragi. Also, yeah, get out of the way, Kambaru. Oof. Man, yeah, if Kamara got hit by that, it'd be, oh, it'd be done. So it looks like we won, maybe? Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, watch out for that. You don't end up like Sengoku. Man, that's one I'm sure, though. Oof. <laughs> Kaka. I have missed that Kaka so much. It's not a sense I ever thought I would say. Thank you for finally helping, Shinobu. I did know this was a test. But I guess it's an adequate score. It's a fair score. So, was that really a test of some sort? I'm still very confused on what that thing is. I mean, Shinobu offered some kind of explanation there. Aberration, not aberration, old, but that didn't tell me much, really. I don't think any anime has ever had as much of a variety of openings as Monogatari has. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. You could show somebody, somebody like five different Monogatari openings and they will never guess her from the same show. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I bet nobody likes a rain dance. 
Yeah, it's time to eat. It's still looking good there, Kambadu. Definitely gonna get Aragi's attention. And yeah, he's gonna, you know, do the typical gentleman thing, it's of course. <laughs> yeah. Just wants to show off those arms. I got you. I got you, Adaragi. Oh, that, that that's a great idea. That just we just just straight up swapped clothes. Uh. Get jealous of him getting aware of that, honestly. Because there was like nothing under that. Are you done with your snack, Shinobu? Never quite get used to that. Shinobu deep throating that thing. Yeah, where were we? Right, right, right. How do we do that? Like, fate mana transfer way, or... That's what I was thinking, but... I can't say I follow. But I guess we'll just do it. Uh, <laughs> we're now riding a swing. It so fits her so well. Suits her, whatever. Oh god, that would... <laughs> I mean, that's... That's a weird combination of terrifying and amazing. I don't I don't quite get it either, but it's quite an experience. Man, so close to getting to see something, but the the stupid swing blocks out the only part that matters. It's so infuriating. Oh, a picture. Oh. Gain, okay. Is that all that was supposed to be? It's a very weird way to just show the picture. I guess that's why she was there, though. I guess it was placed there. <clears throat> Late fee. It was a weird set of armor. <laughs> yeah, it was in your voice. <laughs> uh, that is an amazing laugh. <laughs> it's still going. That was amazing, Araragi. I think she's got it now. So is that laugh familiar to you, Shinobu? But the thing we saw wasn't exactly alive. But not sure exactly what it was. Which would be what? I guess I could have a chance, yeah. It would be kind of a sore spot. Wait, she at least lends it to Araragi. I guess so. Still got things to figure out, though. But I guess we'll get Gain to help us with that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> when did Aragi become part of a gacha game? 
I kind of want a Monogatari gacha game now. Mm. <laughs> Our best friends. <laughs> I like the thing just appears when it's convenient. <laughs> Man, Gain and Shinobu interacting, that's a thing. So what do you have to say? A lot's been building up to this, so... What? Is that... I don't... Yeah, I don't think that was true. That would be quite a plot twist, though. I just... No. Although... You know, Ogi did kind of talk about being the niece, but no, just no. <laughs> I'm sorry for my own Nichan and the shenanigans he's a part of. Is she going to say it? She said it. <laughs> uh, of course, Gain's just gonna roll with that. I mean, she knows everything anyway, so. Uh, do you have time to hear dozens of episodes worth of stuff? <laughs> There's a lot to say. Do we have all night? <laughs> What are you doing, Shinobu? Okay, so I was just trying not to fall asleep. Cute. Okay, so not a fake. Never get tired of people saying her full name. <laughs> yes. Very violent senpai. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of animation there. <laughs> uh huh. I love you, Shinobu. I don't know if I can get used to that. Should, yeah. I remember. I think it was Oni Monogatari that went into detail on that. <laughs> Why? Because he's dead. Well, yeah, but immortality is a weird thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, her second was more impressive. <laughs> we got a stage now. Well, yeah. And yet Twilight didn't understand that.
Well, yeah, but we got him out of this time before it was too late. So somebody just put his ashes in the shade. A temporarily successful suicide. A little time. I wouldn't call it a little time. Has he tried drinking milk? And if he gets back to full power, I don't know if we can handle him. Come by to the best snack. <laughs> uh, no. Oh? What do you mean? A little bit. <laughs> what a cardboard cut out of Yotsuki. Fair enough. <laughs> Especially Koyomi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Araragi's always a wild card. When did she make these and can I have a set? <coughs> Shady on his son. Oh. <laughs> Looks so weird. Like a titan about to eat someone. Probably not. I don't know, he's pretty stubborn. Well, it was because he was part vampire, right? Well, that's a good question, I guess. Seriously, where can I get a set of these? I want them so badly now. Well, usually you could chalk it up to just writer convenience and fiction storytelling. <laughs> Probably. Uh okay, that it triggered him and got him to run away, I guess that makes sense. I mean which he will. Cause she don't echo, you know. Man, it's difficult to keep up with. There's Godzilla Izuko over here. I'm used to it. <laughs> That's a shot. That's an amazing shot. I don't know what this... What to even say about that face, but... I just I love the visuals of all this though. 
You did say that. We're kind of almost out of time, though. I need a little bit of time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you get that picture of Araragi? We know that much. <laughs> As just ashes, just kind of... <laughs> Floating around. And what a terrible existence that would be. Yeah. We have to get into the shade to make any progress. I can definitely understand about being a bit salty at this point. What is that Unity tutorial looking game? Fearsome. I guess he was pretty impressive in a way. Did he eventually make his way to Japan? Ah, uh, that crying sound. Okay, so Shinobu came here because of that, I guess. Makes sense. Man, that was hard to keep up with. But I think I got most of it. <laughs> nope, nothing afterwards. Okay, well, that was the 
10th episode of Ohari Monogatari. And the actual fight itself went by pretty damn quickly. Just Shinobu tossed him Kokura Watari. And we just sliced it in half. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty brief. So, yeah, then Shinobu was kind enough to give him a rating for that battle. And then we moved on. So, yeah, Kamara got a little bit messed up on the clothes, which was great, but, you know, Araragi had to kind of ruin it, but it was nice while it lasted, for sure. We also apparently had to lay under the, the, lay under the slide while swing. The swing while Shinobu just, yeah, did that thing. And it's such a weird type of teasing because, yeah, you, you would think you could see something from there, but every time it was, like, in the right angle for it, the, the, the bottom of the swing would block it, so... That's just a horrible form of torture right there. Because that's in addition to, you know, the fear of it hitting you. But, yeah, apparently there was a little picture of uh, of Gaian under there. So, yeah, go to the North Shoot Heavy Shrine. Simple instructions. And if anyone could fix the link, which seems to be our main priority right now, it would certainly be her, because Meme is nowhere to be found. So we kind of have to go towards the uh, little sister of Meme. So... Yeah, when she said that, the first thing I think of is the fact that Ogi called herself Meme's niece, and it could be, you know, Yuzuko's daughter if that was the case, but they already called her a fake niece, so yeah, that just wouldn't be a thing. But everyone else seemed to buy that story. And yeah, it was great getting to see Yuzuko, you know, she's always a fun character, although, you know... It's hard to follow some things she says. She throws around a lot of big words and speaks in a very fancy way. and But she's a very valuable source of information, so I did try to pay attention as best I could. And basically, she was talking about how there's not really much coincidences here. Everything's really connected, and Aragi is a pretty important, pretty important existence. And possibly things are pretty connected towards the first... The first... The servant, slave, whatever, you, whatever, it was, whatever they call it. And Shinobu was trying to call out her as being an amateur or whatever, so I'm not sure that's because she's saying things Shinobu doesn't want to hear or what, but she definitely seems to know a lot, for sure. But yeah, the real gist of the story is the fact that he did not successfully kill himself. Vampires are immortal, so he couldn't just do that. He was just left on the edge of death and had to kind of wander like that for a while, attempting to regenerate but not really being able to regenerate because the sunlight's still there. And apparently his ashes just eventually made their way to Japan, and that's also the reason why Shinobu made her way to Japan. That's kind of where we ended off on the story. I did love the little cardboard cutouts and big old Izuko playing with them. It was, it was great. I really want my own set. The little gacha gag with Araragi was good too. She should, she should act like Hanukkah was a special case. I don't know how important that will be to things. Yeah, that just that shot of her like standing up in the city and she's like a giant Godzilla. She's peeking through buildings. Really just trying to showcase, yeah, Gaian just kind of being above it all, you know, watching everything else. It was also funny as you comment on the fact that Aragi does not really follow directions at all or follow the logic of the world, so she has to like recalculate her things and stuff based on the ridiculous things that Aragi does. That was pretty funny. So see and the last thing we saw of this story was around here where we just see the ashes blowing in the wind going going across countries that are clearly not Japan and eventually return to here and then we saw some weird crying well we heard a weird crying while we see what's not really a baby like it looks a little bit too big to be a baby but I guess he's trying to say that, yeah, he could, he achieved new life here. Now, that was 15 years ago. Now, uh, she may tr be trying to imply here that Araragi is like a reincarnation of the first one, and that's why they have that sort of connection. I, I think that might be a thing that she was trying to apply, just because the timing of everything, but I don't want to jump to that conclusion right away, but that certainly came to mind. Because yeah, Araragi being the first and second, that would be that would be quite something. But yeah, we'll have to get more information <laughs> to be sure. But that certainly be, could be the case. 
Because that would explain, like, yeah, I don't know, you would always have a connection with aberrations and stuff if that was kind of his origin. So I don't know. I'm trying to kind of piece all this together in my head right now. But, you know, it would make sense why he couldn't leave Kishon alone when she was, you know, dying. Because that technically was his master at a previous life. Because I had to, had to help her. So, because that crying definitely was similar to the crying we heard back then. I don't know if there's any connection with that, but... That was also part of the reason why that came to mind. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing more... This flesh out a bit more next episode. Because I assume she's not done explaining things just yet. So, not a whole lot really to say on it beyond that. Just definitely making it sound like it's not a coincidence that she, that Adarag ran into all these operations. That she's always, always had a connection to them. And if that's the case, yeah, he was always kind of destined to have this kind of complicated, you know, supernatural filled life and all that. So, yeah, hopefully she can explain a bit more next time. And, yeah. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snokey and Ryan for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.